Hello everyone, it's me again, the world's absolutely busiest man, coming at you to make another little podcast for you. Recorded it a while ago. This one's had a little problem, right? No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess around. There's a problem. The problem is kind of now, thanks to the Patreon and the money that the Patreon brings in. The problem is now kind of an Easter egg. You're gonna see the problem about halfway through. Basically, a camera died. And uh, by camera, I mean three cameras. And by three cameras, I mean the hard drive recording three cameras died. But I have used the money from the Patreon to pay someone to make it look really good for the rest of the episode. So just if you're listening to the audio, just ignore me. If you're listening to the video with the eyes, a.k.a. watching, then uh, just wait till that bit, all right? The chat is insane, so it's worth it. You... Do not know how distraught I was when I looked over at the end of the episode and saw that the hard drive recording the video had failed. It will never happen again. I've invested. This will never happen again. Trust me. Thanks to everyone on patreon.com forward slash the downbeat. You allowed me to hire Simon to animate. Oh, I'm giving it away now. Uh, and someone to do the drawing. I fixed it. I think I fixed it. Okay. My guest this week is Paul Mazurkowicz from Cannibal Corpse, the founder of Cannibal Corpse. Do I need to introduce Cannibal Corpse? Legends of Death Metal, unbelievable band, unapologetically relentless. He's only got better with age. I sort of guessed why that is, and I was right, so I was pretty stoked on that. We talked about them being in Ace Ventura. We talked about every little question that I have had in my head since being 13 years old and searching for Cannibal Corpse on mp3.com. Uh, I asked all of those questions. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsor of the Downbeat Podcast. You might see him in the background. Those lovely, lovely little displays. Display is a poster company with a difference. They make metal posters. And I mean literally metal, not Satan and shouting and not showering for days on end. Literally made of metal. Displays mount on the wall with a magnet. No holes, no drilling, no nonsense. If you're renting, the included protective leaf means you're not going to mess your walls up. Just attach the leaf to the wall, add the magnet, and then mount your display. Because this plates are magnetic, not only does it take a second to adjust, but you can swap them out depending on your mood. Are you having some sort of manic episode? You want bright colours? Are you depressed? With Display, there's an option to 3D print a frame to the side of the poster. It's not a real frame, but it is textured like a real frame. And at the sort of distance that you should be looking at a poster from, it definitely looks like a real frame. If you're looking at your posters really, really close up, you're probably up to something a bit weird. They've got official stores with bands like Gojira, Ghost, Judas Priest, Slipknot, as well as movies, games. We even made a Downbeat store. All of the coolest Downbeat merch designs. We got the Coffee Club design. We got tons on there. They got tons of other stuff. You can get 20% off any display using the code Downbeat. If you buy three or more, you get 30% off. I get a little bit of kickback from that. You can support the podcast, you can support whatever I do, and your rooms can look cool AF while doing it. If you're interested in joining patreon.com forward slash the downbeat, it allows us to make these every other week. We pay Simon the editor. When Simon messes up, we buy new gear so it doesn't happen again, and animators and all that stuff. Patreon.com forward slash the downbeat. Or if you just want to buy some clothes, by this point, there's probably really nice merch out www.thedownbe.at there's a UK store, there's a US store both of them ship worldwide it's Paul Mazurkowicz from Cannibal Corpse on the Downbeat Podcast Paul thank you so much for coming on the Downbeat Hey man, thanks for having me I I went through all the appropriate channels and everyone told me Cannibal Corpse is not doing any press and gung-ho the day before this. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Uh, two days ago, maybe? I yeah. was like, I'm just going to DM him. <laughs> Perfect. Man. And you got, I, I must have got you on your phone because it was immediate. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that, you, that you did. So it all worked out great. And then, uh, here we are. So I'm glad it all, uh, it all happened. Um, it's death metal royalty. Oh, man, I appreciate it. You know, it's crazy to think we've been around as long as we have and we're still kicking and here we are about to play a show tonight and all that. I mean, amazing. Uh, 
if I remember correctly, Europe was your first tour. Yeah. Because what was the deal? What was the deal with that? Uh, that would have been for Butcher to Birth. Yeah. Um, I guess ninety one because um, we really didn't do any touring for Eating Back to Life. And then, uh, yep, we got an offer to come to Europe for our first tour, and we did. And it was uh, us and Loud Blast, a uh, French band. And uh, that was amazing. I mean, incredible. Um, what, a, what a time. I mean, all those firsts like that. But, right, coming to Europe in 91 for the very first time, and it was, it was a dream come true. So. Was, it, was it in a van or was it on a bus? No, we were in a bus. We actually had a bus um, through, uh, the company was Metalise, and we worked with them for, for quite a few years after that for a, for a long time. And it was on a bus, albeit more kind of a bootleg bus, not yeah. buses you're going to get like today. And I remember it was us and Loud Blast on the bus and everybody. And, you know, it's funny things to, to look back at that. I, I, I actually had to share, I mean, albeit it was a bigger bunk, and, but I had to share a bunk with our guitar player. No fucking yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, it was like so bootleg when you look back at it going, I mean, but we didn't know any different. You know, we didn't How know any better. How big was the bunk? It was fairly wide. Obviously, it was wide enough for both of us to be in there comfortably in a, in a sense, but... That's just unheard of these days. You know, just don't, the buses I, yeah. aren't set up that way. So this was uh, like a, a bus that you know, I guess, was, was set up that way. Unfortunately, very bootleg, but uh, but fun times. And uh, yeah, just when when you're coming over for the first time, you just you're just happy to be in Europe, you know. And then uh, obviously being on a bus. So, but it was it was pretty pretty interesting. I like because I was because I, I started touring. I think my first tour was 2003. Mm. Um. 36 oh, right. so uh my touring was at the it was pre everyone having gps but it was like you could go on a computer right. and you could type in where you needed to go right. and then we had maps right 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 but 91 your bus driver's using a real life map or that, just knows the road. That's right. I'm sure they were just using maps, you know, like an atlas or something. Um, maybe they did know the road because of them being um, in, you know, from from Europe, say, for instance, on that first tour. Um, but I definitely remember subsequent tours after that, like in the United States. Exactly. You just got the road atlas and that's how you're, you're, pulling, you know, out. you're pulling out and where are we going, right? Get your route going. I mean, I know. Crazy to think the times that we, I mean, and you, just thinking back uh, before that, I mean, the bands that had to do that back in, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the 70s or whatever, but still we were at that tail end of no internet, no cell phones, no, you know, no nothing. You're just, uh, you're out there and uh, pretty, pretty cool to have experienced that. There's a, this is a hundred percent true story. The first thing I ever put into a search engine and I swear on my family's lives, the first thing I ever put, I think it was Yahoo, First thing I ever put into a search engine, Cannibal Corpse. Oh, wow. Amazing. It was like, no kidding. It was, I, Amazing. I'd seen, because my, my dad worked in something that needed computers. So we had the internet real world, like dial up stuff. And I'd seen Ace Ventura as a kid, obviously, the scene that you're in in Ace Ventura. And I was like, well, this is amazing. Like, what is this? Like, we talked right. briefly in the car, like when you're a kid and something's really heavy. Yeah. Although my, my introduction to heavy music was heavier than your introduction. You did mine. Thank right. you. Well, 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 good to be of service. <laughs> and I was like, I need to know. It was like it was the right. first thing I put in. And I think back then it was there was an there was MP3.com was a website mm. before this was before Napster and everything. Wow. And wow. I, it was something. I think, it, but at that point, it must have been. It must have been something off Tomb of the Mutilated or something right. like that. And I remember just being like, I remember <laughs> being. <laughs> going, I don't understand this, nor do I get it, right. but it's my favorite. Oh, that's amazing. That's and, a great story, man. It's it, an amazing story. <laughs> and, it, and that's literally, right. I, I came in at the deep end on mm -hmm. heavy music because of that. Yeah, yeah. Incredible, yeah. incredible. I love, I love it. The, and the only thing I really want to touch on from the history of the band, because <clears> I've, <throat> I've always just wondered, because mm -hmm. that was my right. introduction. I'm sure. What was being on the set of Ace Ventura like. <laughs> yeah, man, amazing, man. What what a what a great experience it really was. I mean, so surreal, really. You know? Did he uh, did I hear correctly that he requested Cannibal Corpse? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the story goes I I, I I think he may have wanted Napalm Death first, I believe. Um, I'm not sure on that. Um, I know there was him being uh, Jim being on some talk shows um, talking about Napalm Death and all that. And then I I'm, I'm not sure if I know that's 
true or not about wanting napalm first. Yeah. Um, but he definitely when 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 we came into play, he wanted us in the movie. You know, I mean, the story goes right. We're still living in Buffalo, New York, of course, at the time, and, yeah. and we get a call from our record label, and they're saying, "Hey, Jim Carrey wants you to be in his movie." You know, <laughs> and we're just like, "What?" Yeah, I mean, this it's is amazing, just, right? I mean, just not the call you were expecting to hear, right? Um, and um, it, we we were just blown away by that thought. Um, we were all fans of his with the in living color that he was on, yeah. you know, the TV show. It was so huge at the time. So, you know, we we were like, wow, well, this is this is so weird, bizarre because of it being, you know, him being a com- uh, you know, comedian and all this. So we actually had to turn him down initially because we had a European tour booked. I remember, and oh, we wow. were like, man, we want to do this. If, if, if you know, it'd be pretty cool, something different. But, oh, man, we got a tour uh, lined up, and we didn't want to back out of that. You know, we, we already had it booked for months or whatever, so we actually declined at first. And then they came back to us with, um, well, we'll work around your schedule then. Um, because wow, he yeah, really wanted yeah, to. Yeah, he wanted us, you know, and we were like, okay, well, if he's going to do that. So they did, and then we when we went down there, flew down from uh, Buffalo, New York to Miami, Florida for um, for the for the movie. It was all done there, I believe, and we went um, on location um, when we first flew in, and we met Jim and the director and everything, and it was just, right, a, a surreal environment. I mean, here we are on a movie set. We're just kids from Buffalo, New York, you know, out of you know not LA or not New York City for that matter you know we're a small small town kind of yeah. a thing small small town guys in a sense and uh, here we are in this movie set with this famous actor here already and it was just, it was surreal really surreal I mean a, a great experience of course but you know yeah you still think back to this day and go did that really happen <laughs> it's it's insane <laughs> it like, is it is one of the three biggest movies of the year that year plus. The other two were his movies anyway. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I mean, right, it was, it, we're, we're so lucky to have been in a movie that big, you know, that it was a hit. And then so many people, of course, got into Death Metal or Cannibal Corpse. We've heard this over the years, obviously, countless amount of times of, if I saw you in the movie for the first time, I was like, whoa, what was that? Well, who are you? I, you know, piqued their interests and then they go and seek us out. And I mean, so it was a, what a, what a milestone, really, what a stepping stone. I mean, we were obviously doing fairly well for ourselves at that point but having the movie and millions of people to having to see that or see us was it was just was huge right you know so i feel like more more people need to be putting like a live band in into movies to get that because it, it literally it right. would have changed my life look at the fucking decor of my house right. is death metal like <laughs> i'm a death metal guy uh, yeah I, it, you know no, you're right though i mean it, you, you the what ifs or you know you you look back and you go, what if that didn't happen? I mean, you'd hope we'd still have the career we've had because yeah. we were set already established and we're going along. But, you know, with that catapulting us even more so and getting people interested, I mean, such a huge thing. You know, you, you wonder what if we weren't in the movie, you know? I mean, so. Do um, they pay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, we, yeah, we were paid as actors, actually. Um, because, nice. yeah, you want on IMDb? Yeah, yeah, I believe we are. And we actually had to join the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> really? Because of us being billed as actors and paid as actors. So that was kind of interesting because, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you learn a little bit more as you go and, you you know, you got your extras and the people that were in the movie, you know, the fans yeah. and all that. And there was a couple of our friends, actually, that are moshing around. and then, Really? And they got paid as extras, you know, and an extra... I mean, you get like a flat fee, a minimal yeah. fee, you get fed or whatever, and you know you're just happy you're in a movie, right? And they told us, well, we're 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 being treated as actors here, so we have to join the guild and sign the papers, and then you're getting what the uh, you know the pay that a, an actor would get for minimum or whatever for the day or what have you. So nice, yeah. So pretty crazy that the residuals still actually come in this day, albeit they're you know <laughs> they're very minuscule, but just it's, the fact that you still get anything. I, I mean, didn't know you get royal. Royalties as an actor. Yep, yeah, we get, we get royalties. You know, we, we still get part of you that. You still yeah. get it, yeah. even if it's even a, if it's literally like a two fifty. You know, like uh, because you, you still get Netflix it. will right. renew it yep, for yep, something, right, and right. they ha- and all the actors have to get a little bit of pay. That's yep, yep. so cool. It is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Okay, obviously you're a drummer. You know, credited really with creating the bomb blast. It, you just sort of, is, is it, what you're like shaking your head yeah. is it now the bane of your life having to perform the bomb blast well not you know it's just 
odd to me, I guess, to think that if that is the if that is true, which I guess I'm I do my own style blast at right and it I guess it was named the bomb blast and I was doing it on uh, different than anybody else at the time, like Pete Sandoval mm. or you know, Mike Smith from Suffocation and all that. So so it is it's just weird to me, you know, to think that I would be this guy that came up with anything, you know, because who am I in the scheme of the world, I suppose. I don't look at myself as being some amazing drummer or anything thing like that i'm just a, i'm just me doing what i do but i i suppose i was there in the beginning to to create something new in a sense so very 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 weird to so think about that for when for some of our listeners there's a lot of our listeners that aren't actually drummers despite me being a drummer a lot of drummers being on here could you explain explain the uh so i remember back in the day it would be called the cannibal blast and then at some point someone called it the bomb blast yeah i think so i don't know how oh, that yeah, was I'm not sure could you explain how the cannibal blast your yeah i mean i guess it's you know i'd like if you took the traditional one foot blast that say pete sandoval was yeah. doing you know and that's really what i did was when we, you know, when you listen to the first Cannibal record, there's really no blasting on all, at all on that record, you know. And um, we heard Altars of Madness, I think, around that time when we were just before we were going to record Eaton or whatever. But so when I, when we first heard the Morbid, we were just all blown away, of course. Mm-hmm. One of the best bands of all time. And Altars of Madness, you know, one of the best, right? Pete's an amazing drummer and, of course, an innovator and, uh, uh, you know, all that everybody knows but uh he was doing the traditional just one foot blast one two you know yeah. super hyper like that and me being the untechnical guy that i am and i've you know self-taught myself i never took lessons i just i didn't always self-taught always self-taught wow. and i just did it by feel i did everything by kind of feel and just what i by, you know trying to mimic what i hear so i remember when we started writing for butchered at birth then and of course we incorporated the blast when you know you listen to that record it's all over the place yeah. um but i i'll never forget just being up at the practice room going okay i'm gonna do a blast beat i'm gonna think of what pete's doing in my head and just i'm just gonna do it and that's what ended up coming out of me it's wow. so weird it's not like i sat and thought and go okay what what do i got to do you know what's the mechanics behind it and all this kind of thing i didn't think of that whatsoever i just sat on the drum set and i did a, a, a bomb blast you know? can you remember the time that you did it i remember it was in buffalo at, at our practice facility and i can't remember and maybe we were writing the song gutted perhaps maybe because um, I can't recall fully, but I do remember just sitting down and going, okay, I'm going to do a bomb blast. And I'm just, and I, I didn't think about it. Somebody might have played a riff or whatever. I just did what I did, which is what I still do to this day. Yeah. You know, the, the fast double bass with the snare over the top of, uh, top of it like that. Um, and, 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 and that's what I was mimicking or trying to mimic with what Pete was doing, but my own, my own way of, of interpreting it, I guess, yeah. you know? So, um, and then that's the way I've done it since you know i mean and literally what, created uh, yeah. shaped a genre right right i mean who would have thought you know so crazy that's just a, yeah really crazy really crazy do you find with like no offense getting old how old are you i'm gonna be 55 coming up Fuck in september me. you know 55 and still blasting <laughs> um so like with that sorry i didn't mean that to sound offensive no, there no, but like, i understand you're an og oh, you've dude, been doing it unbelievable really you do know? you find it's getting harder to do you know it's weird because i th- i think i'm actually playing better than i ever have so do I. yeah i think the older you get you know you end up using your mind more you know you really try to uh, uh, work on your 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 technique more you know to be able to do it at this age you know i look back when i first started like i said it wasn't it was very primitive uh, pr- uh, primitive yeah. very primal it wasn't about any technique or anything it's just about fury and adrenaline and going for it right and that's all the early cannibal records were and then i think as we got up older and you're going okay you know we're we're getting more intense with our music and and it's getting more cerebral so to say mm-hmm. because you know some of the songs are starting to get a little more technical and all that and um you know i really worked hard in the last say 15 years of trying to refine my 
drumming to be more effective the older I get, I guess, you know, yeah. just working on mi minimizing my movements on the kit and sitting properly and all these kinds of things. And, uh, um, so I, I feel that that has helped me tremendously. And, um, and I, you know, I look at my playing now and I feel that I'm, yeah, arguably, you know, playing the best I've ever played. Oh, I um, think you are as well. well like I, 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 I check out the drum counts. I check all that stuff. Do you, do you still practice when you're at home? Oh, of course. I mean, that's key. I think that's key as well. The older you get, yeah, you know, a lot of people you, just you, give up. You can't, you know, I mean, I think I look at it right now. I always think about these things. Exactly. We're just going to be getting done with this tour in a next week. And we've been out, this is going to be one of our longest tours we've done in forever. Ends up almost being close to 40 shows. You know, we're, we're tired. We're beat. We want to, you know, I mean, they've been great. Of course we give it our all no matter yeah. what, but at the same time, you know, we, want, we need to go home and recharge and all this kind of thing. And, and of course, mentally, I almost want to be like, yeah, I don't want to do anything for, for a month, you know? Yeah. But I know I can't because if I wait around and don't do anything for a month, well, that's just going to be that much harder for me to come back to be at the point I need to be drumming wise, you know? So you just got to have that mental, you know, that discipline to go, hey, all right, I'll take a little time off, but then I got to hit it again, man. I yeah. got to hit it because I'm not getting any younger. It's not getting any easier in that way. So you do, you do, I do um, have to keep practicing as much as I can, Same. you know? And I think, yeah, that's, that's key, you know, of course, right? There's like a sweet spot as well. Like I come off a tour right. and I'm like, I'm definitely beat. Yep. I need one week yeah, right. of doing nothing. Right, right. But and then if I let that become two weeks, yep. when you come back, I'm yep. so rusty. Yep, yep, yep. I totally agree. And that's exactly what I've just been thinking about because of uh you know, we still got things to do. We're playing a couple festivals in May when we get home. It's not like I can just, you know, I'll take off and then we'll, you know, resume just before the festivals. I'll be like, wow, I have, I, do I know what I'm doing? Can I play the drums? Yeah. <laughs> no, I need to, I need to take a little time off, but right, get back to it pretty quick just to be able to maintain. Yes. Do you have like a specific practice routine? Uh, somewhat. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I've, I've learned to practice by myself, right? When I I never liked that growing up. I I mean, I was always I wanted to play music. I wanted to jam with somebody. I needed to, a band. And yeah. that's how early cannibal was. It wasn't like I was up at the practice room practicing all the time by myself. It was no one when, when I'm playing, band I'm playing with, with band, yeah. you know. So we're learning as we go and we're all feeding off of each other kind of a thing and which is which was amazing. I wouldn't want to change it in any way, but at the same time I needed to I think the older, right, how we just um, touched upon, the older I got, I'm like, man, I can't just play like that anymore. I need to work on some things by myself, you know, and I had to teach myself to do that, to, to motivate myself to want to go to practice and just drum and yeah. not have maybe, you know, a band or any, anything around me. So I've worked on that over the years. So, yeah, these days if I go, you know, uh, to practice, you know, be by myself, work on, you know, just some basics or whatever, just play. Metronome on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do I'll do the metronome to warm up just to kind of you know work on some stamina or work on you know just to get it embedded kind of a thing and then the good thing with technology these days of course I mean I'm able to play a lot of the cannibal stuff by myself because of course it's, 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 it's click tracked in already you know I mean since we've incorporated that over the years I'm sure you know the story since uh, evisceration plague everything has been written to the click for yeah. for us so I'm able to play the tracks um, off those records and I do that live as well so so at so least you, I'm able to still play sorry you live right you play to the recorded track um yes yeah, some of the songs i'm hearing this so yeah, much from yeah, people yeah, and like yeah. honestly i feel like every other guest that comes in they're like no i play to the album when i'm playing live man and yeah it's such a weird thing to think of because i would have never thought that growing up you know starting out anyway i was shunned the click track didn't want it you know wouldn't have ever imagined i'd be doing what i'm doing today yeah. um and i love it i mean really it just takes so much of the guesswork out of it you know if yeah. i can play a song which i do um, you know, say off the new record or anything like I said from evisceration up. I've, and we got the program guitars in my yeah. you know, in my head. Is the click is the click I, on as well? Yep, yeah. I'm playing. I, I'm, I knew. So when did you start doing that live? Um, well, we we incorporated the click when we were writing evisceration plague, and that's all done to the click for the first time. Um, but I don't believe the sub the tour after that for the evisceration plague tour. I don't think I was playing to the click just yet because I still needed it 
to kind of absorb it and to get over such a dip. You've been playing for t- what twenty five right, years right, at that point, right? So hard to to you know to adjust Suddenly be like right, right. So it took some time. So maybe around um, uh, torture, when I think I started playing a few of the songs under the click. So now we've gone back and found uh, some click speeds, and for some of the older songs, we're able we were able to click out a little bit and um, and all that. I so, wondered because I see I've seen videos. I haven't seen you guys in maybe five, six years. Right. No, in fact, longer than that, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe 10 years. Oh, wow, wow. Pandemic makes everything yeah, seem sure. like oh, I know. short of me. Yeah, right, right. But like I've seen live videos, because I'm, I'm always watching live videos. I don't really care for studio videos, because yeah. I like to see how a band really right, is. Sure. And I've been watching live videos, and I'm like, Cannibal Corpse is tight. Mm. And that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why that I mean, it tightens you up. You know, you're a and drummer as a drummer, and um, any musician. I mean, it's going to tighten you up, of course. And it you know? lowers the adrenaline. Yeah, like, right, right. It does. It does. It's weird because I play. You know, we play 18 songs, and I think 11 of them are clicked out. So it's still some of the old songs. And then when we get to those old songs that aren't clicked out, it's weird to me. You know, like well, it's I, not on a click. Um, you know, the Wretched Spawn, um, Gutted, um, geez, even Hammer Smash Phase, uh, Skullful of Maggots, yeah. um, Devoured by Vermin, Unleashing the Blood Thursday. Um, so we were able to go back though and say click out a song like say Stripped, Raped, and Strangled. We found a click speed that would work, and we were able to do that. So stripped oh, nice. is stripped is to the click. Click, fucked with a knife is to the click um and then anything like uh that was written from evisceration up of course is to the click yeah. because we wrote it to the click so we didn't have to go back and kind of figure something out you know which i'd love to do i mean uh, i would love to play everything to the click and just tightens it up that much better exactly i'm able to relax more as a drummer because yeah when you're not playing to that click there's just i don't know it's weird it, if it, there's it, if there's so uh, you know if there's a main stage festival where there's right. forty thousand people there right, right. you don't have a click you go up there like right this song starts at this speed yeah 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 like yeah. and it's just way too fast sure. and you haven't practiced playing at that speed so you blow it well i do anyway i want to take a minute right here to thank the newest sponsor of the downbeat athletic greens AG1 by Athletic Greens is a foundational nutrition drink containing 75 concentrated superfoods, antioxidants, and stress adaptogen extracts. Regular listeners know I've got a pretty ridiculous supplement routine. I take a multivitamin, vitamin. I take extra vitamin D3, vitamin D3. I take ashwagandha for stress. I take mushroom extracts. I take methylated B vitamins which your body absorbs better. And I take all of these in separate little pills, hundreds of pills. The amount of times I've been stopped at the border and people just look in the bag and they go, well, what's in all these pills, mate? And there's no labels because I'm trying to combine them into one thing. AG1 by Athletic Greens combines all of those things into one scoop. The first time I took AG1, I forgot that I hadn't had a coffee because I was so energized. It got to about three o'clock and I was like, wait, I'm out of coffee. So I've actually taken one coffee out of my morning ritual, replaced it, one scoop of AG1 with 250 milliliters of water. To be honest, if you're doing it first thing means I can sort of eat fun for the rest of the day and i know ag1's got my back with my nutritional needs i've also been getting the travel packs which have been an insane lifesaver on tour you just open them pour it in bottle of water away you go if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements athletic greens are giving you a free one year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase go to athleticgreens.com forward slash the downbeat that's athletic greens dot com forward slash the downbeat and check it out now here is the part of the podcast where the hard drive died i've paid an animator i've paid simon hopefully this still tickles your eye buds that's a new word i made up if not switch to the audio but you know patreon.com forward slash the downbeat they technically paid for this it was quite expensive just enjoy it it's the rest of the episode but sort of looking like a cartoon. 
Oh no, I'm the same way, and I and I would have. It's so like I said, so odd to think these ways because I would have never thought that I would feel this way. Now I I embrace the click. You want the click, yeah. And I, and I talking to most drummers that do play to the click and and play that way, or bands for that matter. Yeah, they they that's the way they want to do it. I mean, and and really, it, it you, you, man, it takes the guesswork out of it. Exactly, you're playing exactly the same every every yeah. every night. You know, it sounds exactly like the record. I mean, some people may shun that like a listener. But I think overall, I don't see how you, how can you, you know, when you're hearing it, yeah, I don't think so either, you know, because you're hearing it exactly the way it should be, you know, and, uh, and I think as a fan of music, I I, I would like that, you know, I I think it's cool that you embraced it. Yeah. Yeah. A a lot of bands that have been going for that long, especially bands that, man, like Hammer Smash Face, you, the programmed click for that would be insane. Well, like, that, well, well, that's why we got to get to that. Yeah, we're trying to, you know. Because give me a go. I did it with all, all our old stuff because I didn't want to program. No, we, it. we're we're going to give it a go because we we want to get to that point if we can. It just takes a little bit, you know, a little more work, right? Because it's going to be some BPM shifts, of course. You yeah, know, that make it a little, ones. yeah, make it a little more tricky. Um, but uh, that's the goal, you know. So hopefully, at one point in the future, we're able to play every song. Yeah, to click. You know, I I did uh, obviously a far less extensive back catalog, but I did the same thing. Mm. I joined my band Straight from the Path like seven years ago. Mm. Stuff before that, they'd never played to a click live. Right. right. I, we did main stage Hellfest, and I did a bit of press afterwards. Mm. And the press guy, very Euro, was like, "I noticed you played all of the songs far too fast," uh, and I was like, immediately, I just like. Uh, crushed me and i was like oh, i gotta figure this out yeah, so i went yeah. through every song right. and programmed the click right right and then yep. went to the practice room and everyone was like this is too slow so then i had to change sure sure yep 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 but then now yep yep it's i'll sometimes do this is insane behavior but i'll do if i've slept badly at home mm. or i'm a little bit hungover or something like that i'll make myself go and play the set mm. in that state mm-hmm because then that's practice. And right. Maybe there's a day on tour when you're I'm right. sick. No, or you're whatever. right. You're no totally correct. No, that's a it's a, great, it's a great way to be. Right. You know, you you gotta. You, you never know what you're going to deal with on the road. Right. Yeah. You know, like a lack of sleep, uh, hungover, or something, or sick, or whatever. You gotta still get up there and do it. So I, I'm kind of the same way. I for, force myself. You know, there's a day might go. You know, I don't want to go to practice. Right. I only got four hours of sleep. But you know what? This is going to be good for me. Yeah. In the long run. And one of the and, variables, the speed. Yeah. Is not moving right like your right. how you feel right right is moving yes right? the speed yes is yes yes and then the confidence i don't know about you the yeah. confidence i get from that yeah. like i go on stage i'm like i'm ripping i the- feel fucking i uh, feel amazing exactly so confident right it definitely it's it boost my it has boosted my confidence um uh, tenfold you know yeah. i mean i'm uh, playing to the click like that you know and honestly and, not just blowing smoke up your ass I can see it when I watch videos. I'm like, I appreciate who's it, killing it? No, I appreciate Animal it. Is sick. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, I think it's a, it's apparent. I mean, when you you know you you can compare and you can see the progressions or what have you over the years, and it, and that's why we you know started the conversation of of me playing better than I ever have, and that's yeah. that's key. That's that's a big part of it. You know, of course the practice and all that, but playing to the, to the click. Oh my gosh, it's been a, it's a game changer, and. Uh, I'm just happy uh, we do it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So, Violence Unimagined. Eric playing guitar in the band. He's been producing, Eric Rutan, anyone doesn't know, yeah. I'm a massive Hate Eternal fan. Oh, no, nice. A huge Hate Eternal fan. Um, Hate Eternal was like my post Cannibal Corpse, mm. like 90. I guess whenever the first Hate Eternal album was, 99 or something, Conquering the Throne. Um, He produced everything. Now, we have a producer that's very hands-on with our stuff to the point where he will write the occasional riff, Mm -hmm. he will write the occasional lyric. Eric has produced, am I right, since Kill? Everything since Kill? Uh, Other than a skeletal domain. Oh, I thought it was everything. No, that was Mark Lewis. We we had Mark Lewis do a skeletal domain. Great great producer. yeah, Yeah. So what I noticed on the new record is it's way harder for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so what, what I'd lo- love to know is it's like, has Eric always been like one of those more hands-on producers where he is, he is bringing riffs and stuff to the table and then now, now he's kind of allowed a, li- 
a little bit more. Right. If you know, I'm sorry, I'm butchering oh, this question. No, I know what you mean. Um, or was he very much just a producer helping you guys to make your music? And then now he's in the band. He was like, I'm going to fuck these guys up. Like, cause it's so, <laughs> yeah. it's, Oh, I know. It's amazing. No, I, for I, you. Yeah. No, my gosh, these guys have just, you know, they, they killed me on the last record, you know, all of them, the three of them, you know, Alex, uh, just writing what he wrote, Rob and, and Eric, of course. But no, I mean, having Eric be a part of the band, I mean, he's been an integral part just being a producer, right? Starting with Kill, other than the Oscalo yeah. Domain record. Um, I mean, you know, he was, he, he's our friend first. I mean, we've known him for so long, of course. And then having him, you know, being in Exactly Morbid and Hate Eternal, I mean, he knows death metal he knows guitar playing i mean just amazing to have a, a producer that can understand the music more maybe more so than any of our producers which we've everyone we've worked with has, has been amazing and incredible yeah. you know but they weren't a death metal guitar player you know kind yeah, of you thing. like colin rich i mean and right and right and scott burns and jim morris and neil kernan i mean i mean uh it's we've all of them, uh, who's great. Who? All oh, of them, are, yeah, right. All of them, great producers, but none of them are death metal guitar players, yeah. you know, and have the background they do of Eric to, that would know the music in and out like uh, like him. So, I mean, yeah, when we started, I mean, he he would be there, um, and we we always went into the studio regardless of we had everything pretty much what we wanted to. And the songs are pretty much written. I mean, there's always going to be some fine tuning and things, and maybe some things would happen in the studio that we'd have to maybe change, like a, a beat or this wasn't working or something. But minor for the most part, it wasn't like anything that we had to go. Oh, we need a couple of songs or or riffs or something. So so Eric would help though, of course, if there was any any need to help any need to help. I guess if there was a need for him to step in and and have his opinion. Which which we of course embrace. Um, so I think overall, I would say we had it ninety eight percent done, and, and Eric Before would be the, right. Right, and Eric would be the producer. Of course, he's going to make his suggestions. Of course, and that's that's fine. But yeah, until he became part of the band, well, yes, now he's. You know, it, it was an easy transition in that sense as well because we had such a great working relation with him and he was uh, allowed to you know write he had his opinions and, and and all these things but now he's a part of the band and he's going to be writing songs so um so that was it, it was it, it it wasn't much different other than now i'm having to play right songs that eric wrote you know <laughs> he's, and, he's in uh, yeah. eternal morbid angel mode right right and and you know and i think he did a he did an amazing job of, oh, I of, I of love him. channeling him to cannibal corpse mode of course because now he you know he he'll tell you i think like a song like condemnation contagion which was probably arguably the hardest song for me to play yeah. and still is and playing live it's just different with the whole drum fills and all this kind of thing and and then his way of writing but but that was a different song for him to write too, because he wouldn't have wrote that maybe for Hate Eternal or or say Morbid Angel. He's writing for Cannibal Corpse, yeah. so he knows he's got to you know write a little bit different, and which is yeah, of course what we need, right? Um, so I think um, yeah, having him in the band and in his songs that he wrote, those the three uh, that he wrote were they're intense songs, and then I mean everybody stepped it up though, exactly like the songs. Alex almost killed me really yeah. with his because they're so cerebral they're so mental i mean ceremonies of the flayed i i oh my gosh i was ready to just like pack it in you know because it took so long to learn the songs i mean and it's not a speed thing it's not a tempo it's just technical it, it's technical it's the mental aspect of it and man that those oh geez that was that was hard that was very hard that brings me on to my next question so so easily so how does a cannibal song these days I assume back in the day it was jam room stuff. Yeah. How does it get made these ways? So how does it get from Alex to you? Yeah. Is yeah. it a, you get an MP3 right, or a, right? Yeah. yeah, these days it's, it's it's way different, right? In the early days, of course, your collaborative efforts. You know, we all got riffs. You're going up. All right, what do you got? You know, we songs are created that way. Yeah. Five people in the room. In the room, you know, everyone's got a couple of riffs. And you put them together. You make a song, and we wrote some great songs that way. Of course, kind of miss it because exactly these days it's 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 the individual effort for the most part, which is which is great too because it gives every song you know the identity of the of the writer. You yeah. know, and and we luckily we got three amazing writers in the band you know so um yeah for instance alex he'll write a song and go okay here's the song he's and he's so technical savvy with the computer and the programs and yeah. all that like him and eric um of course because eric being you know uh, a producer and he knows what's up so we'll be getting you know, alex will send an mp3 
you know, here's the program drums, you know, yeah. here's the song that I would like for it to sound like, you know. How good is his drum program? Amazing, really? amazing. Alex, is, nice. and both of them, Eric and Alex, but Alex is just incredible. I mean, I Alex, when I get one, I'm like, I can't play this. Me too. No, <laughs> there's a lot of times Alex will go, oh, hey, you know, you, you don't have to play it you know, like, like this, but this is like kind of a reference. And I'm going, well, first off, you wrote the song, and this is what you're hearing for the drum department. And you know me all too well because yeah. we've been jamming forever. So you know my limits, and and it's things that I can do, but more than likely it's going to be things I wouldn't have thought of, you know. Yeah. So um, I listen, and then I'm like, yeah. There's sometimes I'm going, oh my gosh, there's so much in here more than I I I can't do that, right? I can't do that, and then I simplify it a little bit, yeah. you know. But I'd say ninety percent of what Alex ends up sending me is what ends up being, you know, what we use, what I play. So. Um, but it has done so much different than the early days. I kind of miss the early days, you know, just jamming, you know, just going to getting in the room and, you know, hashing out riffs. But but it is... So time-consuming, though, it when is. you think well, of it. It is. I mean, we save so much time by just everybody writing at home, and then you get your, you know, MP3s, and then you learn it that way. And, you know, you come together, of course, uh, when you're recording or at practice to re- fine-tune anything yeah. you know, and all that. So, But that's pretty much how we've been doing it for the last, I don't know, you know, 15... Geez, you know, for for a, for a long time now, you know. So, so have you got a setup too? To can do you send back what? Oh, here's what I would do, or you just jam along with it and learn what he's learned. Right. I'll, I'm so on tech. I, I and I it's I wish I wasn't but I and I I'm almost don't have an inclination which kind of stinks because I should be able to do stuff like that and I don't so I'm going to listen to what he sent me and then listen and, and, and go okay I'm going to try to do what he did and then I can do most of it and there's going to be some things I'm going to okay I just it's not natural yeah. for me or I'm not going to be able to do that and then I, and, and he's fine with it you know they're both of them as long as it as long as it works out you know does he send um, you a version without drums yeah I'll get I'll get everything you know get the version without drums get the version with the drums i mean um you know so so i'm able to of course play along without the drums but yeah you know you, so you're you're in essence just learning a song that you know somebody wrote that you might listen to and go yeah exa- you know all right let me learn that and uh yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting way to do it but i think it works out great i mean songs like i, I think back at songs like uh you know priests of sodom off of uh what a evisceration um I mean, I would have just never wrote drums like that, yeah. you know? I mean, but then when you listen to the finished product, you're going, it's total cannibal. Is that an Alex song? That's an uh, Alex song, and I pretty much did everything that he wrote for the drums on yeah. that, you know? And I'm thinking if I would have gotten all those riffs and just did it my own, I would have never came up with more than that, half of that stuff. As you know? technical as yeah, he right, would. right, right. Because he did... Uh, that conquering dystopia yeah, band yes, yes. with a friend of mine, Alex, who's been on the pod as well. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. those songs ripped. Yeah, those were crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Man. I remember how stoked he was. That was a while ago now, maybe ten years. Yeah, or yeah, it's been a little while. But I remember how yeah. stoked he yeah. was right. just about like. Right. I'm in a band with one of Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> amazing, amazing. So cool. You got side projects too. I do. I do. Yes, I do. Reel them off. Yeah, man. I got um, one. Of, I mean, I got two. I'm in right now. Um, I'll. Who would have thought I would have been in any side projects, I guess, at this point. But I'm in a band, a rock project called Umbilicus. Umbilicus. Yeah, and we released our debut um, album in uh, A Path of a Thousand Sons in November. And we actually just played our first three live shows in Florida that we ever played in February just before we left to come on this tour with Cannibal. Nice. And, uh, you know, a, a, just a complete rock and roll project. Change your pace, no oh, gore. Oh, man, I, I, I love umbilicus it. Umbilicus kind of sounds gory, though. It, it kind of <laughs> does. It has, yeah, it has that sense. What is umbilicus? But it's complete 70s style rock and roll. Oh, And I think, uh, you know, anybody that's into, you know, the old school kind of just that kind of music, rock and roll, is what I can't, I can't explain it anymore. So, than you know we were going for that vibe um and I, I to me that's my passion that's my that's been my musical passion for forever for the most part i mean especially when i got a little older then i'm like man i'm really embracing my past and and yeah. you know the the stuff i grew up with and all that and i love rock and roll i just love straight up rock and roll you know good good melody good song you know good vocals and things what like that what are the that. lyrics about um our lyricist wrote them and you know they're just about anything really nothing i mean you know i i, I almost can't even answer that because Not i that entrails be, be, no 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 no, no no it's far from anything i mean it's funny. I'm um, 
you know, people that seek it out and, and when they hear it and then they come to me, they're like, man, I, you know, they, they wouldn't expect me to be playing stuff like this because I'm not, it's not about me. It's not about, uh, I don't know, drumming for them for that matter. Yeah. I mean, I got, it's got its moments of course, but you know, we're really writing to have a good song, Meat you know, and potatoes yeah, rocking. totally, totally. You know, it's about, uh, so I'm having a lot of fun with that, man. Loving it. Hopefully we're able to do some things with that. I mean, it's all a side project. Of course, if things happen, been great if they don't man i'm happy that i we laid down a, yeah, yeah. a cd for, the, for eternity kind of a thing and we're going to try to keep it going here um hopefully we're going to work on some new material soon and and you know work on album number two and um permitting with everyone's schedule if we're able to do some more or maybe get a tour somewhere it'll be great so so that's that's a fun one so it'd be a nice i mean it'd be a nice easy tour in comparison oh my no, gosh no dude. bomb blasts oh and man it's so much fun it's so different right it's so much it's so different and a uh, little little strange for me but at the same time i love it i really do so yeah i know just sitting back and grooving out you know and rocking out it's it's completely different so do you find it recharges you to go back to cannibal totally, totally. yeah i love playing i, I play jazz fusion yeah well, oh, nice like, nice just yeah off my head right again. right right and oh. it just it recharges yeah. yeah no it's been amazing it's been a it's been a great um recharging kind of a, a you know for for everything right you know but man i i love it i do love it which is what it was awesome to be able to show that in my um you know to have an outlet to be able to do that because uh um, I never, never, never did really for the most part, you know, obviously been doing what I've been doing. So that's been, um, that, that project came out right after the pandemic. And then another project that came into play, I know I'm like, I'll set them in one, uh, two bands and, two. Then, and then Tony from Municipal Waste yeah. gets a hold of me and goes, Hey man, you want to start a, uh, you want to start a project? And I'm like, all right, you know, you only live once, right? And it's proper thrashy as well. It's more of that old thrash kind of crossover kind of stuff. And, and it was another passion of mine that, um, of mine as well just that brings me back to the old school you yeah. know how we just talked about like the early days of cannibal when it was just primal and, and primitive and, yeah because there's some thrashy know. riffs like, yeah yeah and right it, in the start right 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 so not cannibal when oh, you look yeah. back at it yes yes but but just i love the feel of that and that that um um, the mentality, you know, I mean, um, so we've, uh, you know, we just released our EP with that, uh, the Heaven's Gate EP, um, uh, I don't know, not that long it's ago. It's got a cool logo as well. Yeah, I pretty good. Yeah, I love a cool logo. Yeah, it's a cool logo, and, uh, and we're having fun, we're getting some gigs, we've played a, played a handful of times, we're, actually, we get home with this. We got yeah, I saw you got two. Two gigs, yeah, we're playing a, a festival in Melbourne, um, uh, Florida, and then we're opening for Voivod, actually, on May 17th, nice. which is pretty cool, in, in Tampa, or in St. Petersburg and uh you know we got some other things in the works because why not you know um but that's a lot of fun man that's, that's a lot of, it's you're it, busy all of a sudden i'm busy i don't know how that happened but you know i guess uh, yeah I, I the the cliche kind of uh, mentality you only live once and life's too short you know and so you join know, three bands yeah why not right you know because i guess i'm looking at it well i'm not getting any younger so who knows what's going to happen and my, my, might as well do it if it comes up so but that that should be it nothing nothing else i don't need anything else <laughs> i got a, i got a question for you on the on these side project gigs so obviously you have a drum tech for cannibal right on these side project gigs, you setting your own drums up? Oh, of course. I'm. I, it's old school style, man. Are you, are you loving it or hating it? Well, it's my yeah. least favorite thing. Oh, on it's. Earth. It's. I'm so used to not doing it, right? You know. And um, I got a pickup truck, luckily, so I've been pu putting my kit in the in the in the pickup truck, and then you know doing it that way, old school style, yeah. like you know. And uh, it's so funny. I can imagine you turn up to a show like, you know, like how. A weekend warrior turns up just right. like this guy's in cannibal cool. right 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 well that's Pick what up it, truck that, soft case yep and that's what it is and i'm setting up my own kit you know I, my buddy was helping me a little bit actually here and there but for the most part i'm doing it myself you know and uh have you scaled down the kit no i can't you, you know, can't do it I, I can't do it i wish i could i for both projects two kicks exact same setup exact okay. same setup nothing's changing i mean i just that's i'm so used to being behind my setup you know so when i did the the rock project when Billick as we started I mean I thought of it kind of like man it would be great to kind of like change it up a little bit but then I'm like well this is what I'm used to playing you know you've been playing double 
double kick drums for forever, thirty yeah. years, forever, right? So right, like, right, and then, switching to double pedal is not going to work. No, it's not going to work. Or even taking out the, you know, I play with the two middle, you know, the two toms, and then the, my one tom to the right of me, and you know, I yeah. play a little bit of kind of unorthodox in that sense. Um, and I always thought, well, it'd be great to just go down to say two toms and a floor tom and, and eliminate that fourteen where it is. But I'm going, I can't because that's just the way I play. Yeah, and I don't think I'd be comfortable, you know, doing it any other way. So as much as right and umbilicus where you know i could probably play on a you know it'd be nice to play on a say a four or five piece kit you know like that or, and and scale it down or even heaven's gate because you know all the bands we're playing with right you know they're all playing these four pieces and uh, yeah. you know and i show up with my double bass you know cannibal kit and you know it's like we've got uh, a cannibal corpse name tag just in case anyone forgets <laughs> right. so it's but it's it's been fun man i mean um you know if it gets a little bit bigger then i mean have to figure something out because uh yeah it gets a little a little tough. I'm about to go to on oh. Tuesday. I go to Australia. My yeah. drum tech oh, can't come. Oh man, that's that's tough. <laughs> and right? it's like yeah. flying, oh, right? And then right. figure out the backline gear. Yeah, yeah. And I just I'm dreading it. That's tough, man. I don't blame you. I don't blame just you. Got, we yeah. just got the most amount of stuff. It takes. This is one of the things that I loved about this. Sort of started as a drum podcast, but now it's like it's just musicians, right? But like one of the reasons i can get on with i think i can get on with every drummer on earth is because there's a humility admittedly i probably lost mine by now but like there's a humility mm. needed to be the guy who loads in first who loads out last who has the most gear who right. carries the most stuff right that just lends itself to like right. like-minded people yeah yeah i hear you yeah. but having said that yeah I can't live without drum tech. Oh, I know. No, I'm so used to it. You know, I mean, we're fortunate to have that. You know, in our career and and for for Cannibal, I mean, it's been a. Was it? Uh, did you get a drum tech early on? I think we've always had somebody since day one for the most part, you know, um, which is we were very lucky in that in that way. Like how we were saying, to do our very first tour in Europe and we're on a bus, I mean, for that matter, that's just, you know, unheard of, so to say, maybe. Or even in the States, we only did one tour in a van, our very first U.S. tour. And um, after that, we moved up, excuse me, to at least an RV. And then after yeah. that, we had a had a bus so we, we you know we we kind of moved up the ladder fairly quick and then we've always had a minimal crew you know so i think maybe yeah maybe a tour in the beginning i might have been a little more hands-on setting up and i got you know which was no no big deal especially when you're younger and you know and you're new and you don't you know not caring too much about it but but it was it was short-lived and and soon enough right we're always having some sort of a crew here to be able to help us out so and then here we are 35 years later of course i have a drum tech and he goes wherever I go and I got a great guy and uh, man, amazing. You want to shout tech. him out? Who is oh, he? Oh, Chris Kirk. Chris Kirk, amazing, amazing drum tech. Um, is he Florida as well? No, he's he? a Texan. He's from uh, Austin, Texas. And uh, yeah, he's been working with us now maybe five, six, seven years, maybe six. I can't even remember. Did, Did you steal him off someone else? No, we got lucky. I mean, I know he's been doing, he was doing um, a King's X actually. Oh, cool. You know, he does, he does them. Um, and then he does some other work, but I don't think he was, I think he was done like a Nile. He did Nile maybe for a tour, George. Oh, so he worked the man for George. Can, the man can set up a lot of drums. Yeah, yeah. He's a great tech. So I think when we, we, we were in that transitional period of, of needing a tech all right you know you get your names you know you find who's available yeah. who can you know all right well hey let's try this guy he's got a decent resume and all this and then uh you know he fits right in i mean amazing i i, I you know, love him man i love having him and he does such a great job for me and, and and the band in general you know because we have such a small crew he ends up helping out you know and the, with the in the guitar department if you know changeovers and things like, like you know. so a, we have a good like dog's body like helping yes yes so like the dream yeah perfect you know, people yeah man amazing now we got a great crew we really do we got a great crew so we're, we're fortunate for that yeah i got one more question on like cannibal sure pretty much and because i know you're on a time crunch right and then we'll do your dream festival yeah um i rarely get someone in who has not only i mean i always get people in who lived through this but who were at the top of the game through actual cd sales to now i get people that were just before and i get people right. who are in the middle whatever right. was there did you notice a change in royalties at like or like you don't have to give me figures or like when you know napster and everything 99 i i 
my professional career happened after right. Napster, so right. everything I know from Spotify royalties and all that being right. being crap is just all I've ever known. Did it really like crush royalty rates like they said? Like were you making bank in the nineties and then less and then back now? Well, it's weird because man, I'm I'm so, you know, out of the game of like knowing any of that for the most part, you know, like, um, but for us, all I can say is it just always seemed to slow. I always like to say we just slowly went up the ladder yeah. in every aspect, you know, in the finances, of course, in the popularity of the band and all that kind of thing, you know, as us as musicians and, or what have you. So, you know, it's weird because you've lived through all these trends and, you know, uh, the fads of bands and we just did our own thing, you know, and, um, you know, we were selling decent back then. I mean, the bleeding was a great selling record for us. It was it was huge, you know. So, I mean, I think death metal bands for the most part don't make a lot in the in the record sales. You know, you're not selling millions and millions of records. Yeah. You know, where it's going to be noticeable. I think so. So, of course, it was always to us. It was always okay. That's just secondary. You know, I mean, money is going to be generated. Touring. It's, it's going to be touring and selling merch on the road, and that's all it's been for our whole career. You know, so and and those regards guards we noticed like i said just going up the ladder just, just slowly yeah. inclining you know the guarantees are getting more you're selling more merch you know of course you're selling a few more records or whatever yeah. so that's all that, that's the only thing i can gauge it by or judge it by is just like you know i i don't even know what was happening half the time with any of that you're just focused on playing doing the best you can making your you know next record writing the better song and going out and supporting you know so it's, it's been a, it's right. been a gradient it's not right. you didn't know it's like a 99 drop off no no you know, because I fucking I downloaded loads of Cannibal Corpse. Right, 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 right. Definitely right. illegally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here I am, a fan. Sure, fucking sure. However long sure. later. Yeah. So I didn't really think of any of that, you know. So I, I, it, I'm, it, it, I, I can't actually answer that um, properly. Actually. And the band's bigger than ever. Yeah. So, so you know. So yeah. Piracy's fine. <laughs> Uh, you heard it here first. Piracy's absolutely fine. Don't demonetize the video, please. Right. Um. That's about it for my like, question questions. Yeah, are you awesome. are you good? Are you having fun? Is oh man, it's great. Man, it's cool. It's been great. We're having been, been fun conversation. Thank you, you know? again. Oh man. man, thanks for having me. Now what we're gonna do? We're gonna run through your dream festival. Man. Okay, I'm gonna talk you through it, so don't worry about <laughs> anything. Uh, the only rule, and this this makes people think slightly differently. The only rule is that Cannibal Corpse is playing, mm -hmm. so you can't like. You, have it somewhere right. you wouldn't want to be right. or sure. or somewhere right. you couldn't be. Right. Sometimes you get somebody who's like, oh, I'm not actually allowed into that country. Okay, well, we can't have it there. Right. Okay, so where in the world would your dream festival take place? Well, that's an easy one, actually. Um, it would be in Buffalo, New York, where we started. You, you go know. back there? Of course, I would go But back. you live in Florida now. Yeah, but Buffalo's my home. Buffalo is our home, my home. My Alex, my you know, me and me and Alex being the two original members yeah. and then actually Rob's from Buffalo. But that's where the original band started. That's where we, you know, where we started in Buffalo, New York. So I would I would want to play at the stadium where you know the buffalo bills yeah uh, the, the american football team that's where you know and that's where i've seen many a show growing up as a as a young lad as a teenager and all this going to the stadium to see a show was just incredible you know to so to be able to say play the stadium would be would be amazing that would be my that would be my dream to play there of course easy yes that was an easy one. what time of year buffalo gets cold oh it would be summertime it would nice. be summer because that's when they had the festivals i remember seeing um you know i saw a, a bunch of festivals at, and they were always in the summer exactly you're not going to have something like that in the winter because it's just yeah it's not not going to happen not gonna, feasible yeah. not feasible so it'd have to be in the summer it'd have to be like in july somewhere around there what's the name of the stadium well it's changed over the years you know it, it when, yeah right we we when we grew up it was rich stadium because it was a there was a company rich products in, in buffalo so it was rich stadium then it, i think it then ended up being like the owner of the stadium uh the, of the buffalo bills was ralph wilson it was ralph wilson stadium for oh, now so, so i don't even Respect. well hey I mean, he was the owner so hey I, I mean it could be worse with some of these sponsor names throughout uh, the, you know they're just ridiculous some of the names of these places my, now. my football team uh reading football club i mean yeah. loosely my football team used to be my football team but i moved so far away now I don't right. 
uh, is the select car leasing stadium. Exactly. Now. That's like, just, oh, I know. Like, I know. There was movies like joking about that. Right. Like, I'm sure baseball, that uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Oh, right. Sorry, but basketball. <laughs> basketball. I'm yeah. sure in yeah. that, like right, the stadium right. is, they make a joke. Right? It's like the cause, whatever stadium. Yep, yep, and now yep. that's real life. Oh, I know it is. It's ridiculous. It really is. So, you know, the way of the, the cool, normal names of stadiums are for the most part, gone. What but, is your dream festival? What would you like to call the stadium? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll bring it back to Rich Stadium. Rich Stadium. Just because that's what that's what I remember growing up, you know, it was going to Rich Stadium to see the Buffalo Bills play, going to see the concerts play, you know, and all that. We're so, in Rich so we're in Rich Stadium in, in July in, in, oh. in Orchard Park, New York, you know, right Last down the road where I grew up from. That was another cool thing. The stadium was right down the road for me. Awesome. And, um, you know, so of course we'd be playing there. And, I, you know, I would look at it as, Man, I'm just such a, you know, I look at our band and I love what we've done and everything, but I don't look at us as being some, oh yeah, we're the best, bit, you know, the biggest band in the world or the best band and all that. You know, we're, we're Cannibal Corpse and we're happy to be where we're at and we're just, you know, thrilled that we're still around and we've done what we've done, you know. So I would look at myself as probably opening the show. You know, I'd want to, probably want to open because I want to play with bands that I yeah. grew up with, you know. You want to be the small band. Man, if Cannibal wanna, Corpse is the small band, I then wanna you be know the, the other Man, I want to be the small man. I want like Kiss to be headlining, you know, wow. back in the 70s, you know. That was my first concert, doing my first band ever getting into was Kiss. How old were you seeing Kiss? I, I was 10 years old, saw Kiss Dynasty Tour in 79. Jeez. That was my first concert ever. And it wasn't at Rich Stadium, though. It was at where the Buffalo Sabres play in the, in the auditorium. It was called the Memorial Auditorium and seen many a concerts there as well that must have been life-changing at it that was, age it, totally life-changing i mean it was um, it was uh, you know, amazing i mean really it was amazing being a huge kiss fan and that was my first band that i really freaked out about you know and uh seeing them live and your first concert it was it was it was amazing and that was the start of it for me um so that just because of of them being the man they were to me, that would be amazing to have Kiss back in the seventies at that time, like Kiss seventy seven, you know, seventy seven like, Kiss, oh, seventy seven Kiss, you know, like you see him on Kiss Alive too, and the back fold cover like that. I mean, that would be man. I'm, I'm kind of regret missing that because you know Gee. seeing him in Dynasty Tour was cool, but man, if I would have saw him in that era, I would have been freaking. Okay, out. it's your dream festival. You can see him in that. Yeah, era. yeah, I'm seeing him in that. Era. In um. And also, like time is a construct in this. You can you can grab bands from many right, eras. It's right. fine. Uh, do you think Kiss? Do you think seeing the shock rock aspect of Kiss at that age subconsciously made you want to shock? Because Cannibal shocked uh, band in fuck to that until yeah. two thousand and six right, in Germany right, and Australia. Right, right. Awesome, by yeah, the way. Oh, fucking thanks, sick. I mean, subconsciously, maybe you know, maybe because I was definitely drawn to that aspect too. Did I your mean, parents let you watch it? Were they cool with it? Oh, that's. I mean, my parents took me to the show. Luckily, I was freaking out. If I, I remember, um, you know, I got into Kiss, and they were probably like, "What? What is this? What, what is our son liking?" Okay, well, they yeah. let me like it, and let me put the posters up, and all that kind of thing, and. And, uh, and then when when I, I remember when I was going to go to the show, I was supposed to go with a friend and his like aunt or something, and then it fell through. And I remember crying basically to my parents like, "Oh my gosh, we're going to go see yeah. Kiss!" So my mom went. We went to the store. Went went to the you know I, back then you bought them at like a local like kind of department store. You know you go to the ticket uh, to the service counter. We bought Kiss we bought Kiss uh, tickets for the family. So it was my mom, my dad, and nice. my younger sister. Wow, <laughs> even younger than you. Yeah, she was. He's three years younger than me. So then we made it a family affair. Not that my mom and dad wanted to go, but they knew how important it was for me. Yeah. So I always feel grateful for that, that my, my, my parents always supported me in my likes and, and my dreams kind of a thing. And this was such a big deal to me that they wanted this to happen for me. So, so, um, so, so we, so we went as a family. Never, my yeah. parents never stopped me like buying Cannibal Corpse CDs and there or anything you go. like that. And, and that's that's a great. And here we are now. And, and, yeah, yeah, and that's what parents should do. You know, they should support support their their children, of course, no matter what. I, I mean, didn't read them the lyrics. No, but. of course, no, no. I, my mom didn't want to know anything about yeah. my lyrics and our stuff. Once we started going, she was happy that I'm doing what I love to do yeah. and that I'm the band's successful and all that. But that's all she needs to know. You know, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, it was uh, it was amazing that they let me. Uh, you know, that they took me to that. 
that because they could have easily, of course, said, "No, we're not going to that. You're not going. You know, we don't want to see that." And, and then you mm, might be an accountant today. I mean, you never know. You never know. Um, but uh, that was that was awesome that they let me listen to what I wanted to do and you know put my posters up and just be myself. You know, I'm sure. Right? They were probably sitting going, "What? what you know, what, what kind of music am I saying?" Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now? Right. What, what am my son listening to? I mean, my gosh, all these crazy bands and you know the imagery and and the you know the, all the subject matter and stuff. So. So that was, uh, yeah, that's how it went. So, um, so kisses, kisses headlining. Yeah, I'm going to say kisses headlining. Who else you? Who else you got? In fact, no more. We got to wind back a little bit. What's your accommodation? What's your dream accommodation? Ah, I'm not too big. I don't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't, a bunk it, with your guitarist. Yeah, it doesn't. Bo- <laughs> it doesn't bother me really. I guess you know, just as long as we have a, a, a have have a room back there at Rich Stadium. There, you know, I mean, yeah, just for, sleep, just sleep. We got a hotel. What's uh, yeah, I'll sleep at home. You know, I'll sleep at my I'll sleep at my parents' house oh, because it was right cute. down the road, man. Yeah, I live right down the road from there. I'd be able to sleep at home. You know, sleep in my own bed or their you know house, and yeah. then you know drive over to the stadium, which is only like a mile mile away you know so i i think that would be my my dream accommodation you know okay. just being at my 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 house you know that's a that's a first actually yeah, yeah. no one's ever said that uh what is catering because you are a you are a long time vegetarian i'm 20 years vegetarian now so that's a, that's a tricky one you know because i look at how i am now and i and i, I definitely have different likes in um than I did growing up, you know, Buffalo, there wasn't much of, you know, and I'm Polish as well from the Polish descent. So it was meat and potatoes growing up. And there wasn't a lot of, say, kind of ethnic foods happening in Buffalo. You know, you're, you know, you're, I mean, the big thing is, is pizza and wings, pizza and, and, and chicken wings. Those famous that, wings. Yeah, right, right. So that's what you grew up with. And I love chicken wings, of course, you know, and I love pizza. And uh, you loved all the Buffalo cuisine that we had. You know, we had a lot of good stuff that was from Western New York. And, um, you know, when I got older, moving to Florida and all this kind of thing, well, I'm getting into Thai food. I'm getting into, Eating you know, alligators. Yeah, well, you know, I, I never did, never ate alligator. Um, <laughs> but just getting more into kind of, you know, Vietnamese food, Indian food, Mexican food, you know, Thai food, um, all that kind of stuff, which I really love now. I really, really love. So it's it's kind of a hard thing to say. It's almost kind of like I'd want a little bit of everything. Like being back in Buffalo, I'd want at least pizza. You know, yeah. at least cheese pizza or mushroom pizza, because we've being from Buffalo, you're a little biased. You feel that we have the best pizza in, in, really? in the country. That, oh yeah, against. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, if you're from Buffalo, you're going to have this argument with anybody throughout the country, especially. I'm trying to think if I've had pizza. I must have had pizza. I have pizza at every single place we ever play, so I well, must have. Well, had pizza Buffalo pizza Buffalo. Is, is a little bit different. It's not like the New York style What's, pizza. Well, how different is it? It's a little thicker in the crust. Um, you know, like New York style. But not sh- nowhere near Chicago. Uh, no, no, not yeah. like that. Not, 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 not like that. I don't really like no, me neither. Me neither. Me neither. Chicago is a whole different ball game. You know, it's like, is it even it's really cake? Is it even really pizza? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, and then New York City, of course, is great pizza, but it's that real thin pizza. Yeah. So Buffalo is kind of like. It's a thicker crust, and man, they just do it. I don't know. Like I said, I, I, we're maybe a little biased because you talk to any Buffalonian, they're going to talk about how amazing the pizza is and how much we love it. So uh, yeah, it's it's incredible. Every time I go back to Buffalo, too, I, I got to get pizza. So you got a spot? Let's, well, let's uh, have there, the spot catering. There, uh, there's a few spots. There's a new one I've been going to called Bocce Club. So we'll get Bocce Club to bring in some pizza, some nice. some mushroom pizza, some cheese pizzas, and then I'm gonna think I'm gonna probably go with maybe you know just to mix it up going okay there's a restaurant that i've been uh, going to in tampa and for the last two years uh it's called tin an um, vietnamese and man i love that place i can eat there every day so i bring bring some bring some platters in from tin an nice. and then maybe a uh, gateway to india there's a place in uh oh you got in, in, in st petersburg and yeah you know, i think that would that would do it that would what's your vegetarian the option on an indian that you got um I, uh, the chana masala mm. yeah i'm gonna go chana masala lovely know, so yeah I mean, what what's the what are you drinking? Uh, Do you drink alcohol? Guinness. Guinness. Nice. You got Guinness? Yes, I love Guinness, man. That's my favorite alcoholic beverage. Not that I'm a, a lush or anything of that nature, but I love Guinness. Man. Couple post show. Yeah, po- yeah, definitely a couple post show Guinness. Um, you know, that's huge. Of course, you know, coffee in the morning. You know, doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just just coffee and and Guinness for after. You know, throughout the day, water. You know, just the normal. So, but Guinness would be that would be a good uh, good end of the show kind of a, of a drink for sure. Nice. And then what's, have you got, a, I mean, usually we would say after party here, but like, 
What's your, what's your, what would be your dream end of festival? Like, are you straight home? You um, Probably having friends and family around, you know, just like to be able to, you know, the, the people that, you know, if your family was around, your good friends, be able to enjoy it with you kind of a thing. I had um, that the other day, like the, the most special birthday of all time. I was on tour for my birthday. It was Wembley Arena. Oh, man. Uh, obviously not headlining, but supporting. Hey, awesome. But, my family lived pretty close, oh, so nice. everyone came out. It's like yeah. the biggest, the biggest right. indoor show I've oh, ever man. played. Incredible! Just it will never happen again. Yeah, that's amazing, like, man. That's amazing. You know, if you can have that, I mean, that's what a what a what a yeah, what a great feeling, right? To have friends and family. So we're in the Rich Arena. The Brit is it Rich, the Rich Stadium? Sta- Rich, Rich Stadium. Rich Stadium. We got Kiss headlining. Yeah. Seventy-seven Kiss. Oh yeah, headlining. We've got a various vegetarian delights yeah. and yeah. catering. Yeah. yeah. Guinness accommodation. You're going. You're going back. Back home. That's right. And afterwards, you're just hanging out with friends. That's right. That's it, man. Lovely. That's it. That's it. Thank you for coming on oh, Downbeat. Man. Thanks for having me. Death metal thanks. royalty. Wow. Thank you so uh, much. Thanks, man. Thank you. Have a great show thanks, tonight. Man. Thank you so much. Let's go. All right.